looking for premium market opportunities. Presenting premium and exclusive service for investors by Calcon. Good morning and welcome to the ASX of Breakfast. I'm Rachel Jones, live from Calkine Studios in Sydney, Australia. Now the Australian share market is expected to record another fall this morning following poor overnight trade on Wall Street. Market sentiment fell as better than expected US retail sales cast a shadow on hopes of a pivot in the US Federal Reserve's aggressive tightening stance. Domestic energy shares might track oil prices lower. According to the latest SPY futures, the ASX 200 should open 10 points or 0.15% lower. Yesterday, the index closed 0.3% lower at 7,122 points. Moving to business news from this morning now, and Webjet is back into profit in the first half of 2023 financial year with bookings at pre-pandemic levels. They saw a net profit for the six months through to September of $4 million, with revenue up 216% at $175.8 million. Webbeds is on track to exceed pre-pandemic profitability in financial year 2023, with second half EBITDA expected to exceed pre-pandemic levels by at least $10 million. Webjet's managing director, John Gusick, says this result demonstrates a spectacular turnaround of $88.4 million in underlying EBITDA from the first half of 22 loss of $15.9 million. Online luxury retailer Setier reports sales revenue growth exceeds 80% versus the prior corresponding period. Net cash balance is greater than $40 million at the 31st of October. The company plans to launch a Chinese language version of mobile apps soon, with more languages set to be released in the future. Setier has access to an extensive catalogue of more than 2,500 luxury brands and 400,000 products of clothing, shoes, bags and accessories. St. Barbara's CEO and Managing Director Craig Jetson has resigned. Dan Lauer has been appointed Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer, effective from the 28th of November. He was most recently the Managing Director and CEO of Australian nickel miner Western Areas. He's had a wealth of underground mining experience gained in deep level underground mines in both South Africa and Australia. He stayed with Western Areas from 2012 until the $1.3 billion takeover by IGO back in June. Well, now it's time for a short break, but stay tuned for more news set to affect your trading day. If you're looking to keep abreast of the biggest stories from the crypto world, the fate of exchanges and crypto hedge funds during the ongoing bear market, and you're wanting to keep up to date with the best and worst performers in the altcoin space and that of flagship currencies such as Bitcoin and Ethereum, then Calcon Media's daily crypto catch is absolutely essential viewing for you. Tune in each afternoon right here on Calcon Media to get the latest scoop from Anchor to ZeroCoin. Welcome back to the A's Exit Breakfast Report. Over on Wall Street, the Dow Jones fell 0.12%. The S&P 500 dropped 0.83% and the Nasdaq ended 1.54% lower. Over in Europe, the Stocks 50 fell 0.8%, the FTSE dipped 0.3%, the CAC slipped 0.5% and the DAX ended 1% lower. MSCI's All Country World Index fell 0.82%, just off a two-month high set on Tuesday. Now, oil prices settled more than a dollar lower yesterday after Russian oil shipments via the Drasbur pipeline to Hungary restarted and as rising COVID-19 cases in China weighed on sentiment. Brent crude futures settled a dollar lower at $92.86 US cents a barrel. That was down 1.1%. WTI crude slid by $1.33 to settle at $85.59 a barrel. Gold prices were weighed by a slightly stronger dollar. U.S. gold futures settled down around 1% to $1,775 U.S. dollars an ounce. Meanwhile, Bitcoin fell 2.06% to 16 
1527 US dollars. That was down around 19% on the month and about 65% on the year to date. Well, that's all for our ASX at Breakfast Report this morning here at Calkine TV. Have a great day trading. Stay tuned for more market updates and economic news throughout the day. I'm Rachel, signing off for now.